Good morning, everyone. And how is everyone this uh, fine uh, Sunday morning? Uh, we want to just uh, thank God for all of you who have tuned in this morning. And we pray that what we talk about today will uh, speak to your heart. And uh, we pray that it might even lift you up if you're in a place uh, where you don't really want to be. Uh, our scripture lesson this morning is going to come from Romans, the fifth chapter, starting at uh, verse one. We'll, re- we'll focus on the first eight verses in that particular chapter. So let me read it for you here. Starting at verse one, it says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character. And character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. After reading this scripture, I think we begin to understand how we are made righteous. It is not in our own power, though we foolishly think we can justify ourselves before God through religious acts. Some scriptures that clarify that for us are found in Romans, the third chapter, starting at verse 10. It says, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. And guess what, church? That scripture is speaking right to us because none of us are righteous and we have all fallen short of the glory of God. That's what it says in Romans 3.22. For there is no difference for we, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So now looking back at our main scripture, I think there are some things that Paul is trying to tell us. One, he's telling us that we have been made right before God and have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Let me go back to verse 1. It says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So God is the one that gives us peace through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the foundation of this peace is in fact Jesus. It is Christ who gives hope, who gives substance to something that we can depend upon. And it's because of Christ's faithfulness that we gain a measure of peace. As much as we try, we cannot in and of ourselves make peace. Christ has given us the ability to rejoice. That's what it says in verse 2. Though whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and listen to this and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Christ has given us that ability to rejoice. We find peace though in the midst of the struggle. Christ gives us peace in the midst of our struggles and is a reason we can find joy in it. The genesis or the beginning of our peace is God's grace, his unmerited favor. 
God's unmerited favor is a gift of his love through Jesus Christ, his son. So what we are finding in these first two verses is that Paul is telling us is that we can't justify ourselves and that Christ, God is the one that justifies us through his son, Jesus Christ. How is that done? He justifies us through Christ by sending his son to die on that cross for our sins. We couldn't die on the cross for our sins because we weren't worthy. But God sent his son who is worthy to die on that cross for our sins, to take our place. So we thank God this morning that God thought so much of us. And in fact, uh, we didn't even have to ask God or call for God to do anything. God did it even before we really understood what he was doing. That's what it means when it says God has shown us unmerited favor. Because even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So one of the things that the scripture says, and I've already pointed out, is that we can rejoice. And guess what? We can rejoice not only in good times, but in bad times. So we look forward again to that eternity with God. But one of the things that 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 shows us is that God is able to provide for us where we are. Uh, We must realize that in life there are experiences that we encounter that are that are adverse, that are difficult. But Paul tells us that when we face these things, we are still to rejoice in our sufferings, in our afflictions, in our distresses, and in, a, in the pressures of life. James 1, starting at verse 2, says, Consider it all joy, my brothers, when you fall into various trials, or whenever you face trials of many kinds. We must continue to rejoice spiritually in our afflictions, knowing that the end product of our suffering is hope. In other words, as we suffer through and God stands in the gap for us, it causes us to begin to develop a hope or a trust in God that that gets us over these obstacles in our lives, that causes us to know that we're not in this fight alone. 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. One of the things that the Holy Spirit reminded me is that suffering brings about this steadfastness or this perseverance and meaning that it brings about this ability to remain firm under difficulty without giving in. So we thank God today that in the midst of our challenges of life, in the midst of our suffering, we can trust that God is going to be on our side and he's going to bring us through any obstacle. He's going to Give us the ability to overcome anything in our lives that's negative. First Peter 1 6, starting at verse 6, says, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that perishes though it is tested by fire may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. Again, we are shown that if we can trust in Christ, we will be overcomers. But more than that, 
God allows this suffering to happen in our lives so that not only we can rejoice in the end, but it demonstrates to us or it shows to us what kind of faith we have. Is our faith real or is it just some act that we are putting on? So what Paul is saying in this scripture is that God has made a way for us to evaluate our faith to see whether it is genuine or not. And that is what keeps us, or that is what gives us that steadfastness that we need to persevere in all situations. Now, one of the things that uh, the scripture talks about, it says that perseverance leads to character. In other words, strengthening character is a necessary thing that we need. It is something that all of us require to be able to present ourselves before the world. Uh, God doesn't want us just to take in what he's giving us and hold it to ourselves. He wants us to spread it uh, among our neighbors to go into the world and make Disciples, not our disciples, but people that will follow him, that will follow God. So one of the things that we find is that as perseverance uh, leads to character building or character growth, one of the things we know about character is that that character results in our confidence being built up that God will see us through. Our hope is never disappointed What is what the scripture says, meaning our hope is never lost. We never lose hope because God is always working in our life and showing us that he is the one that's looking out for us. He's the one that has power and he wants to share what he has with us. God always fulfills his promises. That's one of the things that we find as we read the word of God. And as God works in our life, God shows us that what he says is true. God's love encourages us and our hope and assures us or guarantees us that his promises cannot fail. So one of the other things that uh, I learned as I was reading this scripture today is that if we wait on God through patience, our character again will be ultimately built up. (coughs) Having mentioned the pouring out of God's love, Paul describes the character of God's love. And that is for us, God provides a way out of no way. God doesn't allow us to get bogged down in our own failures, but he picks us up and delivers us out of them. And one of the things that God's love demonstrates to us or shows to us is that we didn't die for ourselves. God did. We, we, we understand that Christ paid a penalty for our sins by dying in our place. God offered him as a substitute for our sake. Having done that, I believe he wants us, church, listen to this. He wants us to display his character to the world. He wants us to demonstrate his love to the world. He wants us to be our brother's keeper. The the highest expression of Human love and devotion fall short of God's love in both nature and degree. In other words, the love that God shows us is leaps and bounds above anything that we could ever uh, put forth in ourselves, in our own strength. Christ's love went far above human love. Christ gave everything. And listen to this. He didn't expect anything in return. 
oftentimes we, when we love someone, we want them to reciprocate. We want them to do something for us. We want them to demonstrate that they recognize that we love them, but God wasn't like that. That's what the scripture says. Scriptures tell us that he died in the place of the powerless, of the feeble, the ungodly, or sinners. And he died even for his enemies. So God is asking you today, church, will you take up your cross and follow him? Or will you just stay in your own lane and follow yourself? God is asking you today, are you willing to die? Follow his example, even if it costs you everything. So I think those are some things that we need to come to grips with. And we need to, and this scripture just kind of refocuses us, brings us uh, back to a place where we begin to understand that it's because of God that we stand. And we need to always trust him. Even when things don't seem in our eyes to be going right. So uh, let's just trust him today. Let's believe and let's know that he is faithful. He will never leave us nor forsake us. So with, with that, let us just pray together this morning as we close. Father, we thank you that you have chosen us to be your children father god we thank you for your mercy we thank you father god for your grace we thank you for your unmerited favor we thank you oh god that you have caused us to see ourselves as we really are i thank you father god for causing us to grow in your love even in the midst of suffering We thank you, O God, how you have given us a heart to rejoice even in the struggles of life, even in, again, those difficult things that we face. You have caused us to abound, O God, and again, our thanks and our praise go out to you. We know that you are worthy to be praised, and we thank you again this morning. For all that you're doing and all that you will do in Jesus name. Amen.